Hello folks, and welcome to the Vertigo Tea Party, and let's try Serial Cleaner. It's developed by iFun for All, published by Curve Digital. You can get it on Steam and GOG for Windows, Mac, and Linux. You can also pick it up on the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. You can pick it up on all of those platforms for $14.99. On the PC, which is the version I will be playing, it supports Steam achievements, has full controller support, Steam trading cards, cloud saves, and Steam leaderboards. I'll have all relevant links in the description below the video, and I will be playing a free press copy that's provided to me in order to make this video. So we're going to hop right in here, but just to get you the uh, the basic understanding of how this game works, the idea is that I think it's like the 70s is the era they're going for here. I could be wrong on that, but I think it's the 70s. And uh, you're getting these calls to clean up these crime scenes, except you're not doing it on the legal side of things. You're basically getting these calls from these mafia members or serial killers who have killed these people and you are to go in and clean up the area without getting caught by the cops so that the cops can't figure out who's doing the killing. And while that might seem a very odd, maybe even boring premise, uh, it's not really, it's quite fun. But let's go ahead and jump right in. I just picked a random mission, mission number 13. Uh, and there is an overarching story. You get story and background from the TV and the radio. And I'll read through this just so you get an idea of how it works. It doesn't take too long, though, so don't worry too much about it. So, from the radio host, we spoke to an anonymous police source about the Echo Killer's modus operandi. He stated the evidence mysteriously vanished from the rail yard murder scene last month, including a notebook, a box of drugs, and a cable, which was believed to be the murder weapon. Hmm, well, that all sounds eerily familiar. All right, so that's kind of the leftover from the mission. I think that happened after the mission that we just finished up. So uh, every time you start a new mission, you start back at your house. You used to get a new, new newspaper, television uh, thing, etc., to get the story. Does the Echo Killer have outside help? Rub it in, why don't you? Once I pay back the debt, I'm done with this bullshit. That's the way it always is. Just one more job. Just got to pay off the debt. So let's answer the phone because the ringing drives me insane. Finally, where have you been? I've been trying to reach you all day. You're not my only client, you know. I've got other stuff to take care of. I thought I paid you enough to have your full attention. I thought we had a deal. If by that you mean you being cryptic and I pretend I don't know whose busy work I'm cleaning up. So you figured it out. What do you think of an idiot? I keep up with the news. Yeah, I figured it out. Make no mistake, I'm in it for the money though. Once I make enough, I am out for real this time. You might do it for the money, but I do it for somebody important. Well, we all got somebody important, but they don't usually kill people. You have no idea what you're talking about. You in or out? In for the time being, what have you got? A motel just outside of town. Four bodies, plus a camera, a policeman outfit, and a stocking. You're kidding me. God damn it, cleaner. Do you want to get paid or not? Yeah, okay, shit. I'll get it done. All right, we can uh, look at the TV. New facts have emerged in the ongoing hunt for the elusive Echo Killer. It's now certain that the killer is a single person, but he might not be working alone. You can go to the radio and get some more news. A murderer downtown ended with the apprehension, wait, ended with the apprehension of a potential suspect in the Echo Killer case. Before being subdued by the police, the man was heard shouting, I am the Echo Killer. Whether this is the killer or just a deranged copycat should soon be clear. There's not really a whole lot else you can uh, interact with. Uh, each crime scene, you keep a uh, memento and you put them in your room because, hey, who wouldn't want to keep mementos from a crime scene? You can also talk to your elderly mother, or could be grandmother. A friend of yours called us a bunch of times. Sounds like a long distance call, very crackly. Ah, uh, yeah, I think I know the one. That's my annoying client. I'm taking care of it. Not much in that, in that little uh, interaction, but... Uh, you do get more you know, from time to time. All right, let's hop into our sweet uh, wood panel station wagon and head on over to the crime scene. So, first thing you'll generally want to do, hit spacebar. That is called serial cleaner sense or whatever the hell it's called. And this gives you an overview of what the level is going to look like. So yellow items you can move. Uh, the nice thing about moving things, it can block off certain areas, but it can also change the patrols of the various cops. What you're seeing, of course, walking around is agents, uh, and you can also see their vision cones in front of them. You obviously do not want to get caught by them. Green areas like this over here, this uh, cupboard is a short, is a, uh, that's a shortcut, or no, that's the, the, I think it was a place to hide. 
Uh, this shortcut goes to... Where does it go? I thought it showed you. But I guess it doesn't. Uh, these other green areas you can hide in by pressing L. By the way, one thing that's going to be a little weird for some folks is if you're playing on PC, you can only use the keyboard. There's no mouse controls whatsoever. I'm using w -A WASD spacebar for this vision thing and then L to, uh, to hide and unhide. Now, uh, see what else do we have? We have sounds. You can see at the bottom left there, there's like purple things where uh, I can play sounds. The nice thing about sounds is uh, it gives you a few seconds and then a sound plays, which obviously pulls any uh, roaming guards nearby, which allow you to scoot by. So if you get caught in this, you're not instantly busted. Or you don't instantly lose. However, the cops will immediately give chase and they are faster than you. So you need to be quick if you get spotted. So obviously, ideally, you don't want to get caught. Now, there's two or I'm sorry, there's three main things you typically need to do in any stage. There's evidence that you need to pick up, which is right there below the person patrolling just south of me. There's bodies that you need to dispose of. And a lot of times there's blood. It looks like there's no blood this time, which is a little weird. Uh, I'll probably do one more mission to show you what the cleaning up the blood looks like. But you often have to clean up a certain amount of blood as well. So let's go ahead and pick up that item as soon as we can. Now, guards do keep the same same like patterns. Now, he did not see me. Not quite. Uh, guards do keep the same patterns every time. So once you've learned their pattern, you're good to go. Also, you need to keep in mind, and I'll show you this. Uh, note it when I'm walking to the left. There'll be little rings around my feet. That is your how much noise you're making. Whoop. Ah, darn. Almost got back in there. Uh, that's the little... Uh, that's how much noise you're making. So uh, if you're... If you're walking normally, you don't make a whole lot of noise. If you're vacuuming, which yes, you have apparently a battery powered vacuum. Uh, that's for uh, vacuum up blood. It makes more noise. I think you make a little bit more noise too when you are uh, when you're carrying a body. So you'll have you do want to keep those things in mind and cops can hear you right through walls. That has screwed me over a few times. Uh, you can also see when I'm moving the cursor keys here, it changes where that little fluttering diamond is. That means I can actually pop out at different sides of the uh, the, the object, and that's good. Now, notice he saw me there. So his light showed red, meaning that he saw me. However, you can hide right in front of cops, and they will never, ever catch you as long as you hide fast enough. See, I could sit there and do that all day, and he'll never catch me as long as I get inside the hiding place fast enough. Dang it. See again, so that you can be a little bit sloppy with. And I know some people who are more of the uh, more purists when it comes to stealth aren't going to like that. They're going to feel like it dumbs it down a little bit. So we're going to take this shortcut back. Yeah, and you can see our audio or our, our footsteps are a little bit louder when we're carrying a body. So when we press space again at the top left, you can see what our goals are. It goes away, though, just so that you can see the map. But it's we need to collect and dispose of four bodies and we need to collect three pieces of evidence. The evidence you don't have to do anything with. You just have to pick it up. Uh, there's usually more than one place to put a body, to drop a body. Right now, we can put one in our station wagon. And if you look at the very top right, you can see we can put one on the vibrating bed, which we'll try that. I don't quite know why that's a good place to hide bodies, but whatever. Now, one other thing you might have noticed this time. Oh, shit, that's not a hiding place. Go, go, go. Ah, almost made it. Sometimes, like, it doesn't make sense when, in places you can hide and in places you, you can't. Uh, let's go ahead and grab this stuff again. But anyway, what I was going to say was some stuff is randomized. The, the only things that are randomized are the blood splatters when they're, when they're there, the evidence, and the bodies. Those things are randomized. Nothing else is randomized. The cops patrol patterns... Oh, come on. The cops patrol patterns... Uh, where the placement of the cops are, all of that is not randomized. It's always the same. Uh, and I actually like that about the game because it makes it so that you have to... Um, and I'm being really sloppy here. Normally, I would be more cautious watching the patterns and whatnot. But since I don't really have to worry about it, since I know what I can get away with on this stage, I just kind of uh, abusing the AI. But yeah, all this stuff changes. So now you notice there's not a body up here. So we want to head back down. Uh, there's a body up there, but it's a little tricky to get up there. Uh, there's some evidence. We want to pick that up, but we want to look out. See, there's that one cop right there. So the right under where it says Sands Motel. 
So I want to see what his pattern is. He looks down, looks up, looks right, and then he looks down, I think. But he looks down, he can't see anything. But can he see to the right because of the wall? He can. Now that's one of my problems with this game. Is that you'll sometimes you'll find that there's cases where uh, you'll find cases where because of the way the level is laid out, it can be very difficult to tell where you can go. Ah, come on. It can be very difficult to tell where it's okay to go. And where enemies can see. So again, for example, if you look to the right, it looks like he should not be able to see to the right because there's a wall there. And when he looks down, he obviously can't see anything. So it's a little weird that he can see to the right, but he can't see the bottom. Uh, and also when it comes to movement, there's been times where I plan an escape route and then found out, oh wait, shit, I can't run that way because that's actually walled off, even though it doesn't look walled off. So there will be a few like trial and error things that you'll run into like that, where you think you can run somewhere, but you can't or vice versa. Uh, all right. And you also notice too, with the shortcuts, these guys cannot follow you through shortcuts. So feel free to abuse those as well. Uh, where does this one even go? Oh, okay, it's right here. So we need to get up there. There's evidence up there you want to grab. Now again, typically here, I would be spending more time trying to learn their learning the enemy's patterns and whatnot. But because I played the stage before, and because I'm just trying to give you an idea how the the premise of how the game works, I'm being a little bit sloppier. Another thing you want to keep in mind too, is that cops do notice when evidence or bodies have been moved. So if you pick something up and hide, and the cop has looked in that location before, they will run to investigate. All right, so let's watch this one person here. I, Cause I do need to pay attention to this pattern. So she, uh, he goes up to the top, he comes back down, he goes down the alleyway, comes back out, goes down, stops for a little bit, not very long, and then goes back up, and then quickly turns around. Ah, so it looks like he actually can go up twice. Ah, no, that time he, he went in, okay. So he's got a little bit of a, a tricky pattern. Ah! And sometimes like that, they can, like, their cones can be tricky. Like, it looks like they shouldn't be able to see you, but they can. I should have practiced this stage a whole bunch before I, I did this. Because like I said, I'm just trying to kind of hurry and do it to show you how it, you know, the premise of how it works without spending, ah, without spending a lot of time on it. But of course, that's ended up backfiring and we're ended up spending a whole lot more time than we really should. Now, some of these stages will take you a while. Really? Uh, because, uh, you know, you had to learn the guards patterns and whatnot, but because the game is pretty darn lenient, you don't have to worry about that too much. So, see, notice that that guard noticed that the body was body was gone. So while they're you know messing around over there, I'm just going to bring this body back. And I'll pop up here. We know he turns around a few times. Went and grabbed it. Now, one thing that messes me up sometimes, and I understand why they did it, but there's two different pickup buttons. There's K to pick up a body, then there's L to pick up the evidence. So a lot of times I go to push one button and it's like, ah, I was meant to push the other button. So that can be a little tricky. Oh, let's wait for that cop on the right to go up. Because again, his vision cone will look through there. Now see, it makes sense that he can see there, see through there though, right? Because there's, you know, uh, lines of sight. All right. So let's watch this person. And now this is a case where we might want to use this sound box. I think some people call it a radio. But first let's pick up this body because this gives us plenty of time. We're going to take this back. I would try to show you the other drop off point, but I don't want to risk it at this point. I just kind of want to like finish this stage. I want to show you at least at least part of another stage. So we're going to wait for this guard to go by. And then when he goes away, we're gonna go back to the right. Now, as far as like, again, I'm a I'm a bit of a stealth purist, uh, so I like the aspect that once you get seen, like you're either unless you run fast, you're gonna get busted, right? 
you can't just say, oh, well, I'm just going to fight and kill these cops, right? You have to, like, run away and hide. Some people, though, are not going to like the fact of how easy it is to get away from the cops, right? Because it's so easy to just dump it to a bush and hide. It's very, very, the AI is very, very abusable in that respect. All right, so hold on. Let's watch that again. I didn't, it's hard for me to talk and kind of watch their patterns. So let's see where this guy goes this time. I want to see when's going to be a good time to play the radio. He does go in. No, he goes up. And then he comes down. Yeah, I think what's going to be best is to play this radio and then go up into that room. And then when he comes to investigate, pop back out there. And of course, this one time, I mistimed it. Oh, maybe? There he goes. Alright, so now we can pick up this evidence. I'm gonna hide just to be safe. There is a body drop up there. How many more bodies? We have two more, bo two more bodies, one more piece of evidence. Uh, they are both on the other side. Yeah, yeah. So, getting out... Well, no, never mind. I was gonna go ahead and pop out to the left, but... We're gonna wait for that cop on the left to... to, uh... take off. One thing you're gonna want to get good at is learning how big the vision cones are. Uh, and using that to your advantage. And staying, like, just outside of their vision cone range. Uh, I have abused that quite a lot. Alright, so can we go up here and come down. No, we're going to have to... This is going to be tricky. I don't remember how I did this before. I think what we're going to have to do is walk in front of this cop. This might be a bit iffy, though. There's a cop up on top, though. We don't want to wait on that. I'm going to wait for them to move. So this is where you start to really need to start watching multiple cops so that you can see their patterns. Because, you know, when you think, oh, OK, cool, that one cop left, but there's some other cop on a really long patrol and that's going to get you. So the most important part is the hiding spot, though, because if we can make a bolt for it and get into the hiding spot, then we're going to be good. I'm going to wait for this cop to do his thing. And then we're going to try to make a run for the hiding spot. All right. So we can get you. Yeah, this is going to be iffy to say the least. Ooh, just barely. Go, 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 go. Ooh, that was close. That was pretty close. And another thing you need to keep in mind is just because I'm doing this mission this way doesn't mean you have to do it this way. Very frequently, there's multiple ways to get around these levels. So, for example, if you look at the top where the stars are, that shortcut, we could actually have gone across there to the right and came down the stairs and came around. Uh, I'm also going to move that vehicle just so you guys can see how that works. I want to watch this cop on the left, though, to make sure I move it when I'm, I'm relatively safe. And I don't think they've ever seen a cop that was random. They might have bizarre patterns, but I don't think I've ever seen a cop move in a completely random pattern. Yeah, see, it, he, see he even kind of double back, doubles back here. So this is where it can get tricky, where it, they, you know, go down and right, come back up, but then go down and right again. Does he go? Yep. Yeah. Damn. Uh, it's going to be hard to really do that, to be honest. I don't know if we're going to be able to get a chance to do it. So I feel like he doesn't move quite far enough. Yeah, we're, we're not going to really get a chance to do it. So as soon as I get a chance, I'm going to pick up that evidence. Let's see again, just barely staying outside of that sight range. And again, it wouldn't have mattered a big diff difference if he saw me. But... Um, yeah, obviously we don't want to. So this car, cop on the right is coming back around. 
So I want to wait for him to go away, and then we're going to pick the body up. We have, wait, we have two more bodies. Oh, there's the one on the... on the thing. Shoot. Eh, shoot. Ah, there's a sound generator in there. Again, and notice the cop found the body. Again, this is where you can be pretty sloppy. You can drop the body, they'll check it out, but once they've checked it out, they go right back to how they were doing it before. So, again, AI is pretty abusable in that regard. And some folks who are more the hardcore stealth aren't going to really like that. They're going to feel like it's kind of cheap. Come on. Eh, I don't remember if she can, or he can see in here. Yeah, okay. Uh, we'll do this one more time. I'm not going to spend a lot. You get the idea of how this works now. And again, we've been kind of just trying to rush it just because, again, I kind of want to just show you the premise. Uh, but we're going to kind of quickly go through. What's funny is like a lot of times when I do less planning and just... Oh, okay, that's not... I thought it was evidence. Um, when I do less planning, I can actually do a little bit better. It depends on the guards, though, honestly. Uh, this one, like those cops with the froze, those are some of the worst because they tend to be very fast. And they tend to be the more, uh, again, not random, but erratic. Uh, let's wait for him to turn. Let's see again. Very important to know those cone vision ranges. But yeah, sometimes if I get bored with doing it stealth and just like, screw it, I'm just going to go. I actually have better luck. It's kind of funny in that regard. Now, this is actually kind of a bad stage. Because I feel like in, mo in most stages... I feel like your options are more open as to how you can do this. This actually feels like a more limited stage in far as far as that goes. Like I feel like my options on how I can move about are much, much more limited in this stage than others. That doesn't mean that's not to say that they're all just, you know, wide open. You can do what you want. But um, but yeah, this one in, in general feels more limited. Oh, what? How did he see me? I don't know how he saw me. Oh, I think he must have heard me. Maybe? I have no idea how he saw me. You also can just lose them. Uh, it's kind of hard to do. I was just trying to show you there. I'll try to do it again real quick. And we're going to try another stage just to kind of show you how that works. But uh, if you get far enough away from them, you actually can lose them. Uh, let's see. Grab this. Huh. Um, oh, I think also the hiding spots can be randomized too. One thing that is a little annoying is getting hung up on stuff. Like I just got hung up on the stairs there. But I promise this will be the last time we actually try it. There are collectibles as well. Uh, there is film tin register or um, collectibles that you can grab. Those uh, unlock additional contracts, like non-story-based ones. And they tend to be movie-focused. movie, movie focused. Like there's a Monty Python and a Holy Grail one, stuff like that. Uh, let's see, where's another body? It's down below, so I'm going to go back. So again, see, it allows me just to be very, very sloppy. Overall, I like the game. Again, I, I feel like if you're more of a purist, stealth purist, you're going to feel like the game is is kind of treating you with kids' gloves because it's so easy to abuse the AI with the way the uh, detection works. Let's go try to dispose this body in the, uh, in the bedroom. I want to see what this does. Ah, oh, okay. It just puts it underneath the bed. I guess there's no other beds that we could have hid these guys under. Uh, dang it. Uh, there you go. So yeah, a lot of this too is again learning kind of what you can get away with. And I feel like as you learn the setup a little bit better... Okay, now I guess he must have saw me, it's not the sound. Um, as you learn what you can get away with, you can do the stages faster. Just because you learn, oh okay, I can... I figured out how to be just outside of their vision range and how to really abuse that. Here. Now, obviously, with each stage, you're going to have to learn their, their specific patterns, but but uh, yeah, overall, I do like the game. I do feel like it's, um, 
It's a little generous. However, the flip side of that, of them being generous, is the fact that the game does not have any kind of checkpoints. So no matter how far you get into the stage, uh, if you fail, that's it. Like you have to start the entire stage over. So I think being more lenient, like with the hiding, is okay in this regard because you have to redo the stage. Uh, because, uh, oh, look, it's showing the shortcut lines. It was not showing these shortcut lines before, earlier, right? I'm almost positive it wasn't. Um, can I? Oh, okay, that's actually, see, this is what I mean, right? Where I thought this was just a wall before, but obviously it's not. So let's go out of this stage and we'll check out one of the side missions real fast. Uh, also, as far as unlockables, I mentioned that you get the uh, film tins. Those unlock these bonus contracts. And the clothing magazines unlock various types of outfits. Uh, let's, oh, let's wear this one, it's kind of scary. Uh, and let's go with the bonus contract. Uh, let's go with that Monty Python one. Again, we're, I'm not gonna necessarily try to beat it, uh, but I wanted to show you how the, uh, some of these other aspects work. Hello, kitty cat. She's like, I like being in the way. I know you do. Now this is where it gets tricky, right? Because I wanna clean up this blood, but this guard is like right here. But, you can see these guards are a bit slower, and it's a little bit easier to ditch them. As you can see, that I dropped the body off to the uh, ferocious rabbit, which, as rabbits do, get rid of the corpse. And now that cop just noticed that the body's missing, and I'm going to pick up these other uh, pieces of evidence. I'm going to vacuum up some of the blood. Ah, almost. I almost abused the cow. Uh, one other nice thing, too, is that if you do pick up a collectible, but then you get caught by the cops afterwards, you keep the um, you keep the collectibles. So it's not one of those games where if you collect the, get the collectible and then lose it because you got busted, you're screwed. You, you got to get it again. It doesn't work like that. This one. Vacuum. Got to be very careful with our sound rings here. And you can see too, as I'm vacuuming, it shows up, or it shows you the percentage that I'm at. So I have to have 33% of the blood vacuumed up. You can do more than that. You can do more than is required of you because if you want to be a good, efficient cleaner, but I haven't really found a big reason to do that. Uh, we want to hide up here. All right, let's get moving. I'm also gonna move that again, just so you can kind of see how this works. And we'll probably finish with this stage once we've done with that. Because you can see I'm already finished with the vacuuming. One strategic aspect of the blood is that while there's blood there, you actually move faster on top of the blood. So sometimes I actually intentionally don't vacuum the blood up if it's in my path, because it helps me move back and forth easier. And you don't make any extra noise when you're uh, in the blood. So you'll notice this guard that's been in the top, he's been locked off because of the gigantic badger. But now because we've moved it, he's able to path out. Now, typically, obviously that's bad in this case, but it gives us access to the inside where we can pick up those other two bodies. Uh, however, there's other times where you can use that, again, to your advantage and block off a guard's path so that they can't get to you. So let's hide behind this cow. Again, you can see the vision cone does not go through the cow. And again, that's kind of a trial and error thing. You kind of have to, you know, either watch the patterns, which is the obvious, the better way to do this. Uh, but um, sometimes, again, because of the way the, the art design is and because of the camera angle, it can be a little tricky trying to figure out where you're allowed to, to go and where you're not. Uh, I'm probably going to get caught doing this because I'm getting incredibly bold here. Go up here, go around him. And because I have blocked off where I'm dropping the bodies, I'm just dropping the corpses off. Again, now if somebody sees those corpses, they'll go investigate, but it doesn't really matter, right? They just go over there, they go, huh? They look at the body, they, they do a quick 180 search around or a 360 search, no scope, and then they just go back to what they were doing, which is again, fairly abusable to say the least. The one thing the cops will not notice, however, oh shit. One thing the cops will not notice is missing blood. So even if they're surrounded in a pool of blood and you vacuum it all up, they're not gonna notice. Let's see if we can get that last corpse before it's all said and done here. 
Doi. I like the weird random noises. So, I like the art style. What? Now, you see how I moved faster on the blood there? Wait, is there any bodies up there? Oh, shit, I got all the bodies. But see, that actually helped me a lot. Leaving all that blood up there actually helped me quite a bit. Because uh, it helped me get away from him faster and helped me lose him. So let's hurry quickly. Come on, go, go, go. Now, he'll see it move, probably. Come on, pick up the body. A lot of times I also feel like I have to be closer to the body than I feel like I should. So a lot of times I'll run over and press the button to click, pick up the body. But then I'm like, ah, oh, I didn't pick the body up because I was just a little bit too close, far away. And while this guy is gone, I'm going to pick up this piece of evidence. Now see, this guy here, I can make as much noise as I want because he can't get out now. He's stuck behind the badger. So we're going to exit and that's it. That's one of the side contracts. So we'll exit out of here. And that's pretty much it. I'll go over the options very quickly and I'll give you my overall thoughts on the game. You got your English, or your language rather, your resolution, you can put it in a window or not. Uh, you, just generic quality settings. Music and sound effects have different volume settings. You can change the key bindings if you don't, if you'd like. There's also this real world data. This doesn't do a lot from my understanding. The only thing it really does is if it's daytime where you're playing the game, your stages will be more brightly lit. If you're playing at night, they'll be darker. I don't think the, the brightness or the darkness has any effect on how far the cops can see. I think it's purely aesthetic, as far as I can tell. But uh, yeah, that's Serial Cleaner. Overall, I do like the game. The art style is interesting. Um, however, I will say things like the music. Again, while the music fits, it can, especially if a stage is taking you a while, it, it loops on itself, so it can be a little bit irritating after a while. That didn't happen a whole lot, and you can always turn it down if it's getting on your nerves, but it, it did get a little a little weird. Also, I will say the aesthetic, like the 70 aesthetic, combined with what you're doing, is just like, it's a weird mashup. Uh, like, hearing this kind of like 70s style music while you're hiding bodies is just like, odd like they don't really go together like there's not any kind of like stereotype or old cliche of uh you know hiding and like, cleaning up crime scenes with the 70s i think they just they like the 70s motif in general so they went that direction and again i don't think that's necessarily a bad thing but it just like it's just a weird combination it's not one of those com combinations where it's like oh yeah this works really well this makes a lot of sense it's a little weird again it's definitely not a game breaker it's just something I thought was a little, a, a strange mix of, of styles. Again, not really a negative, a big negative, but just a, a little strange. Um, but yeah, overall, I liked it, especially for $15. If you like stealth games, and especially if you kind of like stealth, but you don't really have the patience to sit there and watch a guard pattern for 10 minutes, I think this game finds a happy medium. Uh, the stages are fairly short. Uh, there's no checkpoints, but the AI is pretty darn easy to abuse. The guard pathing stays the same on every stage, even though the bodies and the locations of items and blood are randomized, which I actually think is a good thing, by the way. And I'll talk about that in a second. But uh, at least you can learn the guard pattern. So even if you put a lot of time into a stage and get caught, it's not like, oh, God, I've got to relearn the guard patterns again. It's the same thing. You might have to go to a different place than before because there's an item somewhere different but you don't have to relearn the guard pattern. So I think this game has a good mix for those people who like stealth but don't really like the sitting around and just waiting, waiting, waiting to that perfect opportunity. Uh, they don't like that aspect. It's much, much faster pace. And again, once you really learn the, the patterns and how to abuse vision cones and the fact that you can hide even if they see you and abusing shortcuts, stuff like that, you can actually start moving through the stages uh, fairly quickly without having to memorize those, those patterns. Uh, the reason I like the randomized item placement is because I feel like I'm somebody who hates doing stuff over and over again. So at first I thought I was really gonna hate the aspect that there's no checkpoints in a stage. However, having the items moved around makes the stage play a little bit different, right? So based on item placement, I might have things a little bit easier or a little bit harder or or maybe, you know, kind of neutral. It's just, I'm gonna play the stage a little bit different 
than I did before. And I like that aspect a lot. I think that works really well. And I think it's a good thing that they did not randomize things like the guard placement and their patrols, but instead the, the items. So overall, I like it. I feel like, again, it's one of those games where if you just watch this and watch me do those two missions to get the gist, you'll know pretty much right off the bat if this is the type of game for you. It's Serial Cleaner. Again, it's $14.99, available for almost everything. Windows, Mac, Linux, PlayStation 4, Xbox One. I think it might might be also coming on Switch. I could be wrong on that, so double check me uh, on that. But I think I saw that it's coming to Switch uh, at some point. But again, might want to uh, double check on that. But uh, definitely thank you guys for watching. I want to hear what you guys think in the comments below. What do you like about the looks of the game? What do you dislike? Have you tried it? What did you like? What did you not like? If you'd like to see more videos like this covering games you might not have heard of, make sure to subscribe, and I will see you next time.